Right, so we've got a brand new character that we've been working on. This is for a new upcoming show, which will be out on YouTube very soon. Not quite finished yet, hopefully by the end of next week. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're using my character Jacob here to demonstrate our school time lesson of the week. And that is how to embed triggers within triggers. Right, so first of all, let me demonstrate an example. So I've got my character here, he pulls out his phone. Then he gets his hand ready in place. And then, so this character, you know, might be talking to the audience. And when I want him to, I want him to tap away on his phone to demonstrate something that he's doing in the scene. And then when he's finished, put the phone away. And so the point is, sometimes you don't want him to do just one trigger. You know, for instance, I wouldn't want him to pull out the phone, press the buttons, and then the phone goes away. I want him to pull out the phone keep it in place and then press the buttons when it's relevant so and this can apply to lots of things for example I had another character who had handcuffs that he pulled out and then he swung them around his fingers um, when he wanted to um, I've got other characters where they pull out their um, joy pads and then they start playing the joy pads or doing different actions on the joy pad um, as necessary so there's loads of reasons to have triggers within triggers so because i know that you can do the pause um thing where you have an animation it pauses and then you press it again and it does a bit of an animation and it pause but you haven't got control over like this one i can get him to stop and start as much as i want i've got a lot more control over what he does so this is how i do it let's go into the rigging mode and you can see right so go to body and down here you see I've got the normal arm, body, right, whatever. But for this action, I've created a whole body animation. And here it is in phone. And you can see these frames here, when I press T, it triggers him pulling out the phone. And then on the very last frame, so what would be frame 1,100 for whatever it is, Frame one o o two one, sorry one o o two two. Instead of that being the last frame, I've put that in a folder, so it goes there, and then I've created another folder with the next lot of animations in. So that's the Y one. And again, you can see I've done the same thing. He does his animation, and then on the last frame, which will be one o o three three. I put that in another blank folder and there's another trigger button there and you can do this as much as you want um, so for instance I could have him pulling out his phone and then I could press one button to make him tap the phone in one way I could press another button to make him show the phone to the audience I could press another button so that he has one app appear and then another button to put another app appear it gives me complete control over what my character is doing. Hopefully, that will make sense here. Again, quickly, I've got my first animation, my first trigger. So those are all the frames. The last frame goes into a blank folder, and then in that folder, you put your next animation, and you give it the trigger action. And then, just to remind you of what that looks like, Right, let's get him looking again. So I press my first trigger action, which was T, pulls out the phone. My second trigger action was to lift his hand up into place. And then the last trigger action I shows was to have him tapping on the phone. But again, I could have I can add more later on, I can have him showing the phone to us. Right, so that's my trigger in a trigger in a trigger lesson hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't feel free to post a message below or send me an email at info at